Howdy, howdy, howdy. Um, just have a... Okay, hi. Hello, everybody. A little bit clunky this uh, this fine day, but um, we are here, finally, for the second week of um, NHL Weekly. Um, we are... It is, it is not the 22nd of October. Um, unfortunately, uh, not only uh, did I have some conflicting schedule things for uh, Saturday's, uh, the 22nd of October's uh, week two of the NHL Weekly Show here on the Ethernet Community Wrestling uh, channel, um, I've also been kind of under the weather as well so i was trying to get the video out yesterday sunday um i was considering even uh bring pulling it back another day till tomorrow but i figured i'm gonna try to get it uh get it through in one take today um get it up for everybody so that we have this week in the books and without further ado um let's get into the the news portion i don't have any news <laughs> <clears throat> I don't have any news uh, this week. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, I haven't been able to c keep track of, of as much as I would like. Uh, but the only real news thing that I have is for this channel, and it's that we have a JMO show um, coming up very soon that I wanted to do the day after um, Slavkovsky scored his first uh, official goal um, in the NHL and go through... Um, number one draft picks uh in their first year um but i might i one of the things that i want i was considering doing is waiting until the end of his full first season but i think something um i would like to do is is kind of do two two parts to this one going over everything um going over everybody in the first round picks since 2005 and then another one at the end of the year where we can kind of go over um the full stats for Slavkovsky, and then we'll also have some better stats on Owen Powers as well, or Power as well. Um, but uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's move over to our other to our other um, whatever you want to call this screen. We'll we'll say it's another screen, um, and we're gonna start off with uh, the season, the the week two of the 2022 season um in red we've got anybody that um that only lost in the last week uh in blue is anybody that only won in the last week and then we also have um uh the st louis blues technically are the only team still as of the 22nd um pretending like this is still the 22nd that have um a win streak still going even though they've only played um two games uh uh the boston bruins doing really well with only one loss excuse me um the buffalo sabers calgary flames uh carolina hurricanes um detroit red wings have only lost um in overtime so far dallas has only lost in overtime um so uh, and as we go down uh, a little further flyers um penguins have only lost um in overtime and then uh, Vegas with only one loss as well. And then uh, looking into <clears throat> looking into the other side, um, so you have the Ducks, the Predators, and the Vancouver Canucks all with lo only losses in Week Two. Um, Blackhawks and Blues doing very well in Week Two. The only two teams uh, with all wins. But um, the one thing that uh, is very interesting is that we do. Sorry, we do have uh, the Vancouver Canucks who have technically not won a game yet. Obviously, the Ducks won a game. Predators beat San Jose twice, um, and then San Jose uh, only winning one game so far as well. They had the longest losing streak going, um, and would have had the longest w losing streak going if they would have lost Game Six, um, but they ended up picking up that win. So we take those, we take those numbers. We put them in down here, and for the win for for the week, sorry, um, we've got two teams, two teams, the LA Kings and the Boston Bruins uh, in week two at the top with six points apiece. 
Um, three wins apiece for those two. Three wins, one loss uh, with four games played. And then anybody with zero points? I don't believe anybody had zero points because uh, Vancouver had two overtime losses. Yeah, so the actually the Predators and the Ducks, the only two teams in week two to get less than two. They both had one point a piece so if we take those numbers and we put them into um <clears throat> uh week so what i what i'll try to um i keep forgetting that you guys are over here um i've got my numbers right here and you guys are right here so um hopefully you guys are looking at the numbers with me instead of paying attention to my little screen up here but um so uh, as of week two, which this is adding uh, week one with week two, um, so the 2022-2023 season as a whole. So far, we have Vegas and Boston at numbers one and number two. Vegas moving up one spot, Boston moving up five spots from last week. And now the one thing that I do want to show you is, so this is the first week where we had Vegas um, in second, Boston in seventh, and, and so on. Um, and then San Jose at the bottom there. So when we look at the numbers for this week, um, this column right here is going to show you how far up or down the uh, teams have progressed. Um, for instance, let's take Detroit, only went up by one. And then we've got three teams, four teams, uh, <clears throat> that either went up or down 13 spots, LA and Colorado going up 13 spots, uh, Nashville and Winnipeg going down 13 going down 13 spots, and then we also have Anaheim going down 12 spots. Um, the one thing that um, I was considering bringing back was my cursor only because um, I don't know if it's easy enough for you guys uh, to be able to to see where like kind of like where I am capture cursor there we go so if I do this instead of not having it visible um, I feel like it's going to be a little more difficult for you to see like if I'm pointing out something up here um, so at the bottom uh, with five five six five and two four um, games played for Arizona, Minnesota, Vancouver, and San Jose. Um, let's actually take uh, let's take the bottom let's take the bottom four first: Arizona, Minnesota, Vancouver, San Jose. Obviously, two of those teams very unusual that they would be at the bottom. Minnesota um, in a lot of people's um, top three for their division um, in predictions. Arizona and San Jose being at the bottom of everybody's predictions. Um, Vancouver being right around in the middle, depending on uh, how much trust you wanted to put in uh, Vancouver. What is going on with my hair? Um, I might just throw a hat on or just not care. So if we take the next four, um, we've got Washington, Tampa Bay, Can uh, Columbus, Columbus and Anaheim. Anaheim and Columbus, not as shocking as uh, Tampa Bay and Washington. Four games, uh, four points on five games apiece for Washington and Tampa Bay. That is shocking, in my opinion, for for two teams. One of them, a lot of people uh, were thinking would make it pretty dang far in the playoffs. And then you also have Washington that's, that a lot of people are never going to like really like give up on i would say um <clears throat> sorry my other monitor is doing something funky so if we go into uh games played we've got st louis with the least amount of games played with two four points tied with um columbus tampa bay uh washington winnipeg chicago new york uh, new jersey ottawa edmonton and the islanders and then the three teams that are in a lot of trouble, Washington, Tampa Bay, and Columbus, all have have five games played, uh, only four points with St. Louis, four points in two games. So take with that what you will for, for um, your panic index, your panic indexes. So let's go to the um, divisions first. 
And then we'll go into wild cards. So divisions first, we have Boston, Florida, uh, Buffalo. Oh, no, these are, this is the wild card. Let, uh, yeah, 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 okay. We'll put these up side by side, you might as well. So in divisions first, we've got Boston, uh, Florida, and Buffalo atop the east with um, three teams uh, tied with six points apiece, but Detroit uh, topping them because they only played four games instead of five. And then on the other side, we have Pittsburgh, New York, and Carolina with Philadelphia with six points on four games, Washington and Columbus, as we said, four points in five games. Um, in the West, in the Central, we've got Dallas, Colorado, Nashville, um, St. Louis uh, with those two, uh, two, four points in two games that we've discussed, and then the shocker at the bottom, Minnesota, um, tied with Arizona, um, and then obviously their plus or minus would would uh, come into factor um, there, and then. And finally, we've got Vegas, Calgary, and Seattle of all teams. Um, Seattle and uh, Philadelphia being like the real major, and Montreal, to be honest. Um, so if we go based on who I had chosen to be the bottom team in each division for for my predictions, um, I would. I'm trying to trying to remember really quickly. Um, who did I have? I had Montreal, Arizona, San Jose, and Philadelphia. Okay, so um, I've got one of those right currently, and then obviously Montreal and Philadelphia doing a heck of a lot better than I thought they were going to be doing. Um, but um, sorry, the, my my other screen is is going crazy i don't know what that's why i'm actually looking at this one instead of looking at you guys in that one um but anyways so uh, uh and then you've got la in third behind seattle uh calgary and uh vegas and then if we look uh at the wild card so we've got philadelphia and detroit um in the wild card spots in the east and in the west we have st louis and la um, obviously St. Louis, it's not a guarantee that they're going to win all of those games that, um, they're behind on. So it's not something that we can necessarily just say like, yeah, they're, they're doing way better than every other team just because they played less games and have just as many points. They could lose every game from here on out and end up down by Anaheim. So it, it's 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 completely up to the hockey gods at this point whether they want excuse me whether they want St. Louis to do well or not. Let's move over then um, to the players and goaltenders for the week. Uh, we'll start with goals at the top there. Steven Steven Stamkos. One thing that I would like to do, um, if I can remember to do it, is use that ranking system or that, that up or down in the plus or minus rankings. Um, let's see. Sorry, give me one second here. Just so that I can remind myself later <laughs> to, to do that. Um, just so that uh, we can see then. Uh, so Steven Stamkos, number one in goals. Uh, a couple weeks uh, last week he was in fourth so that would be the kind of thing that I would be adding on to there is just where they were um, the previous week then and obviously if they were unranked it would just say you are unranked um, so with six goals we've got Andrei Sveshnikov um, five goals apiece is McDavid, Nachushkin, and Tuck, Alex Tuck and then a bunch of people with four, a bunch of people with three um, and that's the top 25 not top 50 Um, just something that I can remind myself later to do um, to the rest of them. Because uh, for goalies, I think I said this last week, but I was going to do 50 and 25 for players and goalies respectively, but I've gone down to 25 and 10 just because it's a lot of work to try to, try to get all this um, stuff in there. So with assists, we have our Timmy Panarin with 8. 
uh, Brett and Kucherov with seven apiece, and then a bunch of people with six, a bunch of people with five, and then obviously these people down here were all tied for anybody below them were all tied for fourth. So I'm considering leaving that blank, but the issue is um, if we start here with five and then everybody from here on out also has five, it's going to be difficult to to try to try to balance that out. Um, and so add those two together points comp uh, we've got Artemi Panarin with 11 McDavid and Nachushkin with 10 um, and then we've got uh, Rantanen and Stamkos with 9 bunch of people with 7 bunch of people with 8 points and 6 points apiece with Adam Fox rounding out um, the 24 to technically 25 I guess but based on this last one got a lot of stuff to for some reason to to iron out um, for next week but if we look at our top 10 goalies of the week goals against we've got uh, Stalik, Alex Stalik, um, Ottinger, um, Tristan Jari, uh, Skinner, Samsonoff, Hart, uh, Hill, Jake Allen, Logan Thompson, the only one in the top 10 for this week with a shutout, and then Ilya Sorokin. Um, obviously, we've got a couple goalies, uh, Vili Huso with, with a shutout as well. Um, and so goals against averaging between 0.74 and 2.06. And then saves percentage, um, doing pretty well with our top 10 currently at uh, at the very least above a 9.34. We're at Aiden Hill is... Um, and then you've got Stalek, uh, Ottinger, Jar uh, Jari, Skinner, Hart, Allen, Logan Thompson, uh, Linus, Allmark, and Ilya Sorokin. So I believe uh, Allmark is the only one that's not in this top one, which means that uh, I believe it is samsonov maybe that that gets kicked out of the out of the list between the two of them and so one thing that i would like to do for these as well is the upper upper or lower uh based on where they landed um from the previous week and then it would actually be pretty fun to do um the same thing for these guys over here so this is our um points for ranked and then points against ranked uh, this is for the first week uh, where we had St. Louis with zero, zero points against uh, uh, because they had not played a game. Um, Detroit with only one game played, zero. And then going from there, New York Rangers uh, with the most points against, or uh, the most points for with 30. So if we go down to week number two, and again, like I said, it'd be fun to have uh, these ranked out as well. We've got LA with 56. So if we go up here, LA, LA Kings, where are you? 19th. So they went from 10 points for in the first week. So they added another 46 points in their second week. That is madness. Uh, in six games, 20 goals and 36 assists for 56 points. Um, at the bottom, we've got St. Louis with only 24 points. Again, we have to remind ourselves in two games, that's nine, uh, nine assists or nine goals and 15 assists. I mean, um, with the most assists uh, that I can see is 36 with with LA, and then the most goals, uh, Boston with 22. If we go for against, we've got St. Louis at the top with only 15 uh, points against. And then L.A., um, as much as they're scoring uh, between goals and assists, they're actually giving up more, um, 50, uh, 73 minus 56. So they're giving up a, quite a few um more points uh, than they are uh, gaining them. So that's 73 uh points against in only six games so let's uh let's go back over to um so this is week two again la where'd you go la there they are la in 15th six games played um only six points so for th uh three and three so they're at they're right at um 500 um so and then uh looking at their previous week here yeah, so despite the fact that they're that they gave up 
quite a few. They, they what was it? They they scored fifty six um, points in this previous week. They must have a lot of them must have come in uh, these three games here, and then obviously that loss must have been a high scoring loss. It, it, if you know if they're giving up that many goals at the same time or uh, goals and assists at the same time, so that's kind of the the fun stuff. Uh, that I personally really enjoy um, about doing this the the statistical analysis stuff is um, getting to really deep dive into some of the more interesting stuff and that's why I keep saying at the end of each video which we are rounding down to the end of the video shockingly usually um, these videos go a little bit longer but this one's actually going pretty fast today um, but uh, I always keep saying if you guys are interested in uh, a specific stat you'd like me to look into, even if it's just like, hey, Andrew, I, I'm interested in this specific stat. It doesn't really have a whole lot of bearing in the show itself or maybe even like a weekly show itself for the NHL Weekly. Maybe it's something you could do for a uh, one-off for the JMO show. Happy to happy to take any suggestions from you guys. If there's any other statistics for the week that you want me to take a look at, let me know in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to come back over to this one um, where I think... Um, oh, nope, just kidding. Um, I would like to say a massive thank you to anybody that is watching currently or has been watching uh, the videos and liking and commenting and everything. It's a huge help. Obviously, not gonna not gonna blow up or get big uh, uh, overnight. It's not something that I've even that I'm even striving to 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 get to currently at like this point in time um i'm just trying to grow the grow the channel as best i can um on the budget that i have <laughs> so um if you guys uh are interested um make sure that you uh turn on notifications so that you know when the videos are happening as well as again i have to keep saying this over and over again because i want um to get in touch with everybody is make sure that you're commenting on the videos let me know what you think of everything what i could what i could adjust or um make make better um as well as what you, if there's anything you want me to cover in the future, I really want to hear from you guys. I'll be in the comments talking um, with you guys. If you guys uh, go in there and say something, I'll say hi and and thank you back. Um, but until then, this was the October 22nd edition of the NHL Weekly Week Two of the 2022-2023 season. And with that, I'd like to say thank you again, and I will talk to you guys again soon.